Hello, this is Jeffrey T. Tiller, back with another video. This is on a topic that's more service management than ITIL. I try to be broad as I can and not too much of an ITIL nerd, which I am. This is on the topic of Siam. Not a type of a cat, but it is spelled S-I-A-M, like places in the Middle East have been called in the past. But this stands for Service Integration and Management. SIAM came into big view in the last decade and is now well over a $2 billion industry. And by 2020, 2021, it'll be well over $4 billion. It's growing exponentially. So what is SIAM? It is, and so the SIAM companies will call it multi-sourcing. And I use quotes because what they want is you to outsource a service, usually offshore, to India, most likely, some to China, some other places. Some's onshore, but most of it's off because they are, they will talk about doing it for quality, but it's almost always done for money, the saving of money, the appearance of saving of money. It's not always the truth. I've seen many cases where this multi-sourcing model has caused more internal governance need to offset the cost savings. So let's talk about this. So a company will take a service, let's say supporting HR, and they will line that up, and it's usually not the build, it's not projects, but it's the run or maintenance activities that are offshore. And so they will take many of these services, set up SLAs, and the cost for those services. And yes, it may be an onshore, offshore type of model or a mixed model, but it'll be taking a service at a time, maybe going to different vendors, which you can imagine the governance needed there and how well your ITSM documentation and training needs to be up to snuff. But also, let's consider how if we have multiple vendors in multiple time zones with some people here some people there some people everywhere it takes a lot of governance right and your processes better be tight they better be so tight that they squeak because you have if you have any open any terms anything that's open for interpretation it's going to get abused misused think about changes or incidents it's just CMDB, it just gets wacky really quickly. And so, if you are exploring SIAM as a corporation, I encourage you to get your processes very tight. And I can help you with that. But if you are a company that is looking at how to save money, I can help you with that as well. But the SIAM model is just one, and SIAM meaning multi sourcing, that's a word that's used as well. It just needs high, high governance. And so I see the positives and negatives of each, especially when you're talking about skill sets and shortages of talent and all those key buzzwords that we hear all the time. But whenever you go down that road, just think of it as a service. How are we supporting HR? How are we supporting the financial people? through an ERP, let's say ASAP, SAP or Oracle, PeopleSoft, something of that nature. How are we supporting that service, putting SLM on it? Because your internal people need to have the same service levels that your stuff that got sent overseas. So it's, it's very, very uh, needing for high touch. Just want to introduce the topic of SIAM. We'll revisit it at a later video. Once again, it's Jeff T. for Tiller, Service Level Management. And we thank you for joining us. Please like or share the video. Please take a moment, leave a comment, send me an email, possibly uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. But I do thank you for joining us. I hope you'll come back soon. Have a great day.